When I think about Diablo series, a journey comes to mind. A journey that transcends time and embraces nostalgia. It's been 11 long years since Diablo 3 graced our screens. I don't know about you, but waiting that long for a sequel makes me feel like I've been stuck in a loading screen all this time. Time truly flies, my friends. Lots of things changed in all these years, and the world seems like a bit different place right now. What hasn't changed, however, is that Diablo series follows me throughout my life with each entry signifying a different phase of my journey. Diablo 2 arrived when I was a teenager, ready to slay demons and stay up way past my bedtime. I still hold the memories of discussing character builds during classes while avoiding suspicious looks from our teachers. And then Diablo 3 came along in my early 20s, a time of self-discovery and exploring the world. It's funny how the game mirrored my real-life quest for legendary loot and personal growth. Currently, I am in my mid-30s, still capable of feeling an excitement for life. However, novelty and surprise become much harder sensations to come by. I've seen things, experienced a fair share of adventures, and so games need to try much, much harder to captivate me in their worlds. Whether you're stepping into the world of Diablo for the very first time, or returning to a familiar realm, pause for a moment and think about the moments that have defined your own gaming journey so far. With that in mind, I would like to welcome you to another thrilling episode of our channel. Today, we review Diablo's 4 main campaign. This video will be part 1 of my review process, focusing on the leveling in game's story mode. In the near future, we will release part 2 to discuss the game's endgame. But before we go into the details, let me share a key point about Diablo 4. It's not trying to revolutionize the genre. Instead, Diablo excels as a highly polished video game, but it does have a few gameplay systems that might hinder some of the fun players expect from the game. Overall, I am having a blast playing the game, but we will also discuss few games designs that bothered me during my playthrough. But real quick, before I get into this video, if you happen to enjoy it, please make sure to subscribe and also drop us a like. It only takes one second of your time, but makes a huge difference in how the video performs in the YouTube algorithm. Alright, enough of that intro. Grab your swords and ready your spells. It's time to dive into the grim world of Diablo 4, where heroes are born and inventory space is always in short supply. Let us begin with the gameplay, the most crucial aspect of any ARPG title. In Diablo 4, the gameplay has a slower and more intimate feel compared to many other games in the genre. This is particularly noticeable at the beginning of the game, cooldowns are longer than you would prefer and mana regeneration is limited, which means you'll find yourself relying on basic attacks quite a lot. Enemy encounters are also less crowded and it may take more time to defeat enemies than you would initially anticipate. The numbers you see on the screen, such as gear stats, skill tree perks and damage numbers are relatively low. This intentional shift in pace and scale may resonate with some players while others may find it less appealing. It's worth mentioning that as you progress closer to level 50, the gameplay picks up speed. From glimpses of high-level gameplay I have seen, the tempo and scale appear to be more on par with typical expectations. I believe you should keep this in mind when deciding if Diablo 4 suits your preferences. Now, let's explore the strengths and weaknesses of the gameplay in Diablo 4. When it comes to ARPGs, one of the key factors for me is how smoothly the gameplay flows. Thankfully, Diablo 4 doesn't disappoint us in this regard. Casting skills feels incredibly fluid and seamless, even with the slightly slower attack speed. The character responds promptly to your commands, just as you would expect from a Blizzard title. Moreover, the skills in Diablo 4 not only look impressive, but also perform exceptionally well. Each class offers a variety of enticing skills and honestly, my biggest challenge was deciding which ones I want to use since I want to try them all. 
It's a really good problem to have and a testament to a very well designed classes and abilities in this ARPG. Overall, the game looks, sounds and feels fantastic to play. One of the highlights of Diablo 4 is the sheer excitement and satisfaction you experience when your build comes together. See, unlike some other ARPGs that restrict players to specific abilities or damage types, Diablo 4 offers a refreshing approach. In this game, you're not confined to just one element or damage type for your character. As a sorcerer, for example, you can mix and match abilities of different elements and still perform well throughout the main campaign. This flexibility allows for diverse and dynamic playstyles, keeping things engaging and enjoyable in the process. What makes builds even more intriguing are the unique legendary powers available, even at lower levels. These powers introduce captivating twists to your abilities. Let's take an example of Necromancer, who has an ability to turn temporarily into a blood mist. By default, it's a rather defensive ability. However, there's a legendary power that makes this ability a detonator for corpses, turning it into both defensive skill and an AoE nuke. Once you start obtaining these legendary powers and find ways to synergize them with one another, the true fun begins. Experimenting with different combinations and discovering the synergies between various powers will keep you hooked and entertained. But now, let's shift gears and address some criticisms of Diablo 4 gameplay. Despite the enjoyable gameplay experience, there are three main aspects that hinder the fun during the main campaign. These are resource starvation, over-reliance on loot drops for power fantasy, limitations of imprinting legendary powers. First, let's talk about how resources are generated in Diablo 4. Each class has its own primary resource, but essentially they all function like mana points. Some classes passively regenerate mana, while others need to actively generate it. Remember that feeling when you play the sorceress in Diablo 2 at low level? You would cast a few fireballs here and there, but then resort to your basic attack with weapon until you could afford mana potions, right? Well, that's somewhat similar to how the first 30 levels or so can feel in Diablo 4. There are no mana potions in this game, and the resource generation statistics found on gear are few in numbers and even not that significant. At the beginning of your first playthrough, you will have very limited options for resource generation. For quite a while, your main choice will be to spam basic attacks that hardly make a dent in your enemies. This issue becomes less problematic as you progress and unlock passive abilities through skill tree, dungeons and loot drops. However, personally, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was trying to have fun with these awesome looking skills in Diablo 4 while the developers intentionally limited my ability to do so. In Diablo 4, the game heavily relies on rare loot drops to address gameplay challenges. While it can be very satisfying to obtain the items you need, there are consequences of this design choice. The bonuses from skill trees feel particularly underwhelming compared to other games in this genre. Diablo 4 limits players to choosing only a maximum of two upgrades, often with just minor percentage boosts. The true progression during the leveling process lies in loot drops. This reliance on loot drop can lead to frustration and disappointment when the desired items don't drop, stopping the players from playing the build that they want to create. For example, I reached level 50 with my druid without obtaining the legendary power I needed for my desired build. It would be beneficial if the developers offered more meaningful choices within the skill tree instead of locking build-defining powers behind loot drops. This over-reliance on luck for both the floor and the ceiling of a build could be addressed by simply tying the ceiling to loot and the floor to level progression. One major concern in Diablo 4 is the limited imprinting of legendary powers. These special perks can be extracted from items and transferred to others, allowing us to retain the power even when the original item becomes outdated. However, the problem is that we can only extract a power once, which becomes problematic when dealing with weapons that we frequently switch. 
This limitation raises questions. Should we switch weapons and imprint the power, risking not finding it again? Or should we hold on to the power and wait for a duplicate? These questions aren't fun to think about when players want to try out different gear and builds. In my opinion, extracting legendary powers should work more like the perks in the Codex of Power. See, in the Codex you can unlock most powers by completing dungeons. Once the dungeon is completed, you can imprint the associated power to as many items as you want. However, the powers unlocked this way have the lowest possible value range, so there is a trade-off. The problem is, yet again, that some powers can only be obtained as legendary drops and are not available in the Codex. I wish we could imprint these legendary powers multiple times once we have dropped them. Another option would be to make all powers obtainable through dungeons or other challenges. Either way, it would be great for enabling different builds without reliance on pure luck. <sighs> to sum up my thoughts on the gameplay of Diablo 4, despite my criticisms of certain aspects like legendary powers and resource generation, I've actually had a lot of fun with the game so far. It's important to remember that reviewing a product involves being critical of its design components even when you overly enjoy the product itself. It's worth noting that your gameplay experience may differ from mine. Some classes have more mana issues than others. For example, I had no problems with mana on the Necromancer and had a decent experience with the Druid as well. It was mainly the Sorceress who caused the problems. Additionally, you might come across legendary powers that greatly enhance your playthrough. And so, the issues that I pointed may actually not be as striking to you as they were to me. Now, let's shift our focus to another important aspect of Diablo 4, the immersive world. Diablo 4 offers an immersive world that sets a new standard in the genre. The exceptional music leaves a lasting impression, perfectly capturing the dark atmosphere of Sanctuary. The top-notch cutscenes showcase Blizzard's cinematic expertise, combining fluid animations, camera angles and powerful storytelling for memorable moments. Voice acting, like Lorav's captivating voice, breathes life into the characters and adds depth to the immersive experience. While immersion isn't typically the main focus in ARPGs, Diablo 4 strikes a balance between the core elements and an immersive world. It captivates players on multiple levels, providing a more engaging overall experience. In a year filled with PC game releases plagued by performance issues, Diablo 4 stands out as an example of a smooth launch on the platform. As an always online title, Diablo 4's launch has been remarkably problem free. The servers have remained stable and I haven't encountered significant login queues. I have only experienced one disconnect caused by Blizzard servers and encountered just one single bug that required me to return to the character selection screen. In terms of performance, I've had a consistently positive experience. I am playing Diablo 4 on my PC with RTX 3070 and Ryzen 7 5800X. Setting the game's resolution to 1440p and most settings to the maximum, except textures, with DLSS AI enabled, the game rarely drops below 90fps and maintains a smooth range of 110 to 120fps. It's worth noting that Diablo 4 is actually a visually demanding game that sets a new benchmark for graphics in the genre. The visual design is simply stunning, featuring meticulously crafted environments and intricate character models. The attention to detail is impressive, allowing players to fully immerse themselves in the dark and atmospheric world of Diablo. Unlike other games in the genre, each region of the world map feels quite distinct and offers interesting locations to explore. As a result, traversing the open world of Sanctuary 
becomes a memorable experience, free from technical hiccups that could hinder your enjoyment. Lastly, I want to talk about the art style and the narrative of the game. A notable improvement over Diablo 3 is the return to a darker and more serious art style in Diablo 4. This shift is a welcome change for fans who felt that the previous game deviated way too much from the gritty atmosphere of Diablo 2. The setting of the game is bleak and brutal, evoking a sense of despair. Sanctuary, the game's world, is certainly not the place you would want to inhabit. The dark tone is also reflected in the game's main narrative. The initial moments of the game feature a cult-like theme in the narrative with a focus on the local population. The story starts on a smaller scale, matching the slower pace of gameplay. However, as the game progresses, it transitions into a more typical Diablo-like narrative involving the fight against prime evils and powerful demons. If you ever played Diablo games, you know the drill. These are my thoughts on the main campaign experience of Diablo 4. I had a great time leveling my characters and the overall experience felt extremely cohesive with a consistent pace and scale complemented by the game's impressive art direction. The gameplay was engaging, especially when I was not forced to rely too much on basic attacks. While there are many aspects of the game that could be discussed, I chose to focus on what I found most important, what made me like Diablo 4 and what I wished could have been different. I hope you found this review helpful. Before we conclude, if you decide to buy Diablo 4, here's a piece of advice for building your first character. Adapt your build based on the legendary items you acquire along the way and don't hesitate to experiment. Respecking in Diablo 4 is simple and affordable, so take advantage of this feature. You don't need to strictly follow beginner's builds from websites like Maxroll or Icy Veins, especially if you find some fantastic legendaries for other skills. Embrace the flow of the game and discover what suits you best. I am actually curious to know your thoughts on Diablo 4. Does your experience align with mine? Or do you have perhaps a different impression of the game? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. It only takes a moment, but helps me grow on this platform. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.